let's review this game and see how we worked the opening, the mid game and the end game. So we push through with e4 and they block down, develop the knight, looking to attack the pawn. So again, putting pressure on the pawn in the center and then simply grabbing and capturing with the queen. Still at this moment in time, in my head, it's the opening stage. The king hasn't got to um, safety as yet and we haven't developed any of the other pieces. In my head, the opening is basically looking at how you can best get your pieces out into the game in the best positions possible in order to put pressure towards the king or the king Gary or the key pieces or the key squares, etc, etc. Until that's done, you're still in the opening stage. But I won't get bent out of shape over opening mid-game, end-game. You just play your game and you can then work it out afterwards once you've um, played the game. So we brought the bishop through attacking the smaller, weaker piece here, which is only defended by the king. And they decide to attack us with a smaller piece, attacking a higher piece. So we go and put a check on the king with the queen. In some spheres, um, once the queens are taken off the board, then it would be classed as you're in the end game and you've circumvented the mid game because now the big, big cheeses are off the board. Um, I'm not of that kind of mindset. I'm still in opening stage at this moment in time because the kings aren't safe and we haven't developed our pieces into the game. Push the pawn onto the knight. Again, you know, this is me utilising this pushing the pawn onto the knight situation. I have fallen foul of it recently in a, a recent over the board match. And um, the first one of this year, the over the board match, because it kind of left me, what's the word now? A little bit behind in developing my other pieces. Pretty similar to this, in a sense, you know, pretty sort of similar to this. Uh, but this is a blitz match, so I'm not I'm not expecting the opponent to find the stronger defensive moves. So the knight's attacking the pawn. We bring the bishop up, defending. Then they attack it again, but that looks a little bit better for us because if we do take, if the bishop takes, then we get the bishop for free. We take, so they realise that they can't do that now, so they attack a, the b pawn. Push up now, blunting the bishop's diagonal. And still, I'm classing this as the opening stage because the kings haven't got safe. We're both still developing our pieces and uh, it's not really hitting the mid-game stage. But like I said, don't get twisted or bent out of shape over the different stages. There's no clear ways of attacking the king, so there's no, no way of ending the game at this moment. So we have to play chess and just keep manoeuvring pieces so now we've developed the knight off the board it's a valid reason for moving it um, we don't want the bishop taking it at this moment in time we feel like it's got a bit more life in it at this moment the opponent castles and then the castle and that's the opening done with the opening phase lasted quite a long period of time and we're comfortable in the fact that we have got our pieces out we need to link up the rooks. We need to start looking at owning these files here with the rooks, etc. This is the mid game now. This is the start of the mid game. And the mid game can be over in the flash of a light. We will see how this one transpires. So the rook comes and attacks the pawn. We develop our knight. Bishop comes down to attack. We attack the bishop. And the bishop captures. We capture the bishop. And then the pawn pushes down. At this point, once that's happened, in my head, we've reached the end game because we have actually captured a higher piece with a lesser piece. So we have more costing material in a sense. Not that I'm into any of that, but following the process for us, how do we differentiate between the opening and the mid game and then the end game? This is my my thought process i don't know if anybody else thinks like this but um, i'm just thinking for me so that i get an understanding of what stage i'm at within the game so we've captured a higher piece with a lesser piece 
But has it really improved our position at this moment in time? Psychologically, I'm in end game mode now. Yep, so we've got two rooks and a bishop. The opponent's got a rook, a bishop and a knight. And when you look at the costs of those, we're slightly up. But it doesn't mean that we've got a better position on the board. So that's the key thing about, well, okay, you might have all this material, but where is it on the board? There's this lovely position here, which potentially could get something, but depending on the position that we've got, does it really give us a benefit? So we push the pawn on to get the attack on two higher pieces. And the knight comes down and it's got like a good counter counterbalancing manoeuvre because it's attacking a higher piece. If you have a look at the gauge bar, it's still showing we're plus 4.9. But that might just be because we've got more material in a sense. Might not be the position that we're winning on the board. So we move the rook now, x-raying through to the bishop, and then it's got a lovely fork here. But the computer's laughing at that. It's basically saying, well, it's just plus 7.5. Beautiful fork. You'd think that that was really um, going to be winning for, for black. So we take the bishop off the board, and the knight takes. Knight's gone far into the corner now. Looking at the position on the board, I'm thinking we might be a little bit ahead in the game. Gage Bar is agreeing with us on this occasion. So we bring the rook up, tuck in the pawn, and then we can put a check on the king because our bishop is protecting here. So this is definitely end game process now, and the end game can take forever. Yep. Um, and it can be messed up quite easily as well. This is where you can get your, your, your massive blunders, your stalemates and lose major pieces because either you're overconfident with your position and the smallest of mistakes, then the whole game can switch just like that. So the king moves, so we grab another pawn. They grab their pawn, we put a check on the king and then we start grabbing pawns. Always mindful once this knight comes in, Probably going to be some more pawns peeled off, but we have taken off quite a few and we do have quite a lot remaining. So we're hoping to keep a few that are going to basically mean that we've got advantage and we've got a few more maybe. It's always maybes when it comes to the end game, you never can tell. So they've come down with a check as expected, brought the king up here, looking to stay safe in this little area if they keep attacking. But they haven't kept attacking. So the king can come across now and harass the rook. Rook goes to attack the pawn, which is protected by our rook at the moment. And the knight goes and grabs a pawn. That's right, yep. Yeah. So we did say, well, they're probably going to end up taking a few pawns down. And just going now to try and improve our position, take a few more pawns off, maybe get this as a passer. Always a bit not worried about this pawn, but looking to try and improve our position better. They attack this pawn. We move the king attacking the knight. So that's a bit of a morphism there. You know, you attack my piece, I'll attack your piece type thing. And we start moving the king up. Psychologically, I'm thinking, oh, is there a way of getting up to here, to here, to then just get a checkmate whilst they're busy focusing on grabbing pawns? And they do grab. So we push the pawn up. So it's basically going to be supported by the bishop. Knight attacks the bishop and we support the bishop even more. Rook comes and puts a check so we can now attack the rook and take the pawn off the board. And at this point in time, the greedy munching, it, <clears throat> it looks like they're trying to squish us, but not from this position. It's not going to work. So now we can come across, get a check on the king and get the rook knight off the board, which is going to give us more material advantage. So they continue playing. Now all we need to do is keep our king safe. And just keep pushing and pressuring the king. And just keep pushing the king up and pushing this pawn up. And it should get some sort of a promotion. And we just keep pushing. The opponent's still playing on. And we grab the rook. So at this point now, it's just a matter of not wanting to get any stalemates. So you have to be still careful. The opponent's still playing on. 
So I have to make sure that they've got space for the king to move and just block off all the areas that it potentially can come around. It's got to be careful. And at that point, black left the game. So you can see the length of the end game um, from the point of us hitting the end game process. It took a while and you have to be very careful in those situations.